Okay, this is the last section for Unit 7 on uh, circulation of water, surface currents, and this is going to be the density currents. These will be the ones that move up and down due to different densities caused by temperature and salinity. Remember, cold water actually sinks, and salty water is more dense than pressure water, so it sinks as well. If you look at this picture, we actually have the Arctic Convergence Zone, and this is usually where water is going to sink, uh, where water moves up and down or up and down, up and down, up and down, and we actually get this water to move together. And because it's more dense than the air, it sinks down towards the bottom. Uh, we also have some in terms of uh, the uh, bottom water and the Ross Sea and the uh, Labrador Sea up here and the Wendell Sea down here, and we'll talk about that. But basically this is 90% of the ocean water. The 10% that covers the surface is not the ones that actually do this. This makes up 90% of the ocean. It is located below the picnic line. Remember the picnic line is where we actually get a sharp density difference. We don't get those really at the poles because the water is cold up and down. But we do get that close to the equator. Um, it actually is dependent on temperature and salinity. Temperature probably the biggest thing. And remember, 4 degrees Celsius water is what we're going to find at the bottom. Uh, we get down, uh, we get downwelling also when we get this, and it moves down below the picnic line. But this is a convergence area, just like these are a convergence area. If you remember from plate tectonics, it's where plates collide, and this is where water masses collide with either land or other water masses. Large volume of seawater. Again, it's 90 percent. It's extremely slow flowing. Uh, some of these, uh, like the Antarctic bottom water, actually sinks and moves at about two to three feet per hour. So it's a relatively slow process. And each ocean basin is very similar because the ocean density uh, down there is actually very similar and it's moving across abyssal plains. It will move around seamounts, mid ocean ridges. It will move down into the trenches, but it'll actually move basically from uh, north to south. Okay, this is an embedded video. Um, this is going to be an ice cube that they actually put green food coloring in. You can see as the water froze, the green pigment got concentrated into the center. And then finally, because it's made out of water, uh, eventually froze. And you can see it's melting. It's in a container. You can see surface tension um, actually causing the water to go up. But the cold water sinks moves down towards the bottom and that's deep convection. If it actually hits other things it'll move it around but now it's actually in the, the larger uh, more concentrated green blob and you can see it moving. And that was ice melting and this is what happens really close to the poles. Now this is going to be where fresh water meets salty water and if you take a look at it, actually I'll let it play till I show the two water masses um, and what they've got is they've got a barrier in between separating the salty water and the fresh water and you can see both of them have this uh, meniscus like looking thing showing surface tension where it's actually climbing the surface um, it would be on the close side and the far side as well but we've got a glass a container or a plastic container in between these two water masses and what they're going to do is there there's the bottom of each they're going to move this glass and when they do uh, the very second they do that, you can actually see the salty water moves this direction and the fresh water moves that direction. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into this because I want to stop it a little sooner than that. Salty water, fresh water. Okay, and now they're moving the separate separation screen and you can see that the salty water moves in and the fresh water is going to start moving again. But if we get this, um, this is actually an internal wave, and you can see the different densities of water slosh back and forth, but there's no real uh, connection. And if I can stop it there, um, this is something that we're going to try to do, not in a glass, but we'll try to do it in a container. Now they're using a lot of other things in here, uh, really dense, uh, probably like, uh, I don't know, liquid sugar. Uh, and they're using other things in there. I don't know what the top one is, but the density increases as you go down, just like they would in a water mass. 
sources of deep water, and I showed this one at the very beginning of uh, this section, uh, deep water formation. You can see it up here in the Labrador Sea. You can see it up here in the Nordic Sea. You can see them down here in the Wendell Sea and the Ross Sea. And you actually have places where water uh, upwells, and you've got places where it downwells, and then you've got all this uh, warm water, the red, and cold water, the blue, and purple water as it's actually warming up, coming up towards the surface. And you can see this big flow, and this is the uh, conveyor belt, which I'm going to be showing you. Um, I'm also going to, we're going to do something like this too, where we'll put cold colored water, it'll be an ice cube probably, uh, in water, and it will melt, and we'll have holes at the bottom of the cup, and we'll actually get to see the water flow. This is the deepest sea water on the planet. It is the coldest, saltiest water. And how cold? Again, it's at 4 degrees Celsius, the most dense water on the planet. Most deep water masses are from polar oceans. So they, you can see they form up there and they form down here. And they sink due to density. Um, they hit the abyssal plain and they move horizontally. Uh, the stuff that forms down here in the southern hemisphere moves north. You can see it moving there. You can also see it moving there. And the stuff in the north actually moves south. And you can see it moving. And it's a quite a, a incredible trip. And again, it's a very slow trip. Antarctic bottom water, this one right here. Uh, you can see we have very cold water down here, warmer water at this surface. Although we get with the warm water, we get lots of evaporation, so we get salty water, and it's going to sink. This is the deepest water on the planet. It is the coldest. It sinks around Antarctica and the Wendell Sea and the Ross Seas. It is the most widespread deep water mass on the planet and can be found as far as 40 degrees north. So leaving it around 0 degrees, 90 degrees, so it goes all the way to the equatorial region and then moves as far as 90 degrees. And at that point it actually runs into topography and runs into, um, it actually does warm up down here, so it actually runs into more dense water. It carries oxygen to the critters way down here at the bottom. The North Atlantic deep water, there's the Antarctic deep water. This is the North Atlantic deep water, same sort of a thing. It's a complex mixture of water. It originates in the Norwegian Sea, so the Nordic area, but it's also mixed with the Gulf Stream, which doesn't really show, but it's one of these blobs. Mediterranean water, which is this water right here, which tends to be warm but really salty, so it has a bigger density of uh, heavier density in the surface water and other North American water masses in there as well and it extends from the North Atlantic to about 50 degrees south so like there this is going to be intermediate water and what they're going to do is they've got this uh, water and they mix it in and so they've got less salty water on this side they've got a glass separation or plastic separation um, they've got mixtures here. This is why this level looks so weird. This level is nice and flat, but they're kind of sneaky on this side. They didn't use any colored water. But what they have on this side is they've got really salty water, which they've got down at the bottom. And they've noticed they didn't write it in large text like this because they've got a body of fresh water up here at the top. And this is going to be a density bigger than one and smaller than the other. So pull it out, and you can see it moves right in the middle stays above the salty dense water, goes below the fresh water, and this is how we get these different water masses in an ocean. So we do have really separate oceans inside the ocean. Intermediate water masses, and there's that deep, that North Atlantic deep water that moves in, being less dense than the Antarctic bottom water, being more dense than the Antarctic intermediate water, or the Mediterranean flow, and you can see this has a bigger density than this Mediterranean flow. So we get these different water masses in the ocean. And this goes from the North Pole to the South Pole. It's kind of weird to see the Antarctic bottom water moving this way when we normally think South is on this side. Antarctic intermediate water sinks in the Antarctic convergence right there. It is cold, but it's less salty than average. So it actually is less dense, it sits up above all the rest of these. In the Mediterranean intermediate water, um, it is actually relatively warm, but it's really salty because of the evaporation. So it is dense and it will sink down. Um, but again, it sinks down until it finds water that is more dense than it, and then it sits on top of that. The conveyor belt circulation, this is how it all 
starts and moves. So we get the formation of cold water up here and it sinks down. We get formation of cold water here and it sinks down. It's a mixture of surface ocean circulation um, where we get warm water moving on the surface and deep water moving down at the bottom. It mixes from the, the surface water with the deep water, pulls oxygen down, brings nutrients up, and it mixes water between different oceans um, where we can get North Atlantic water mixing with Indian water, mixing with Pacific water, which mixes with the Atlantic water, and the oceans are interconnected and we really do have one ocean. Um, this is uh, an NSTA uh, interactive for ocean circulation and I'm going to go to it and I'm going to trust it and if you take a look at it before we begin it's going to talk about uh, different things in there about detours when it hits something that's more dense than it and there it goes so the water moves across the surface gets up towards the pole and sinks moves down moves on the bottom of the water some of it moves up here and warms up and comes back up some of it actually goes all the way around and once it gets down here it actually is really slow moving and it can actually take about 10,000 years for water to move around this whole loop and you just want to see the North Atlantic circulation the South Atlantic circulation the North Pacific the South Pacific the Indian and then I'm not sure what the random the random I guess is all these but that is the North Atlantic circulation and if we go back to this here it goes again the thermo haline which means temperature and salinity warm water moves up here and sunk because it was cold moves across here comes up in the Indian Ocean and then comes up here around um, Alaska moves across the surface and then sinks back down and you can see it actually goes the stuff that takes the shorter route gets around faster than the one that takes the long route but that is the conveyor belt circulation about a 10,000 year circulation path conveyor belt breakdown uh, we're actually worried with uh, global warming uh, we'll actually break this conveyor belt because what it's going to do is it's going to melt all this ice and the ice is coming down as fresh water it is cold but it's hitting the salty water and because it's less dense what it does is it actually gets to this point and instead of getting this water to sink because it's cold and salty it actually is going to sit up on the surface and it'll shut down this whole conveyor belt uh, which is going to stop oxygen rich water from getting down to the bottom of the critters down there and bringing nutrients up to the surface for bringing lots of critters there so bad 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 and I don't know if it's moving okay so it shuts down hey. the whole process and that hay was actually me talking to my wife yesterday when she got home um, as I was actually making that, that video okay this is end of unit 7 ocean circulation um, and we've got some things on here talking about this island in New Guinea uh, which actually had a uh, volcanic eruption which dumped material down which changed the density of the water and got moved around the planet pretty well as well as actually caused different densities. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Adios.